History of the American Folk Music Revival Part 2 Early Years The folk revival in New York City was rooted in the resurgent interest in square dancing and folk dancing there in the 1940s as espoused by instructors such as Margot Mayo, which gave musicians such as Pete Seeger popular exposure. The folk revival more generally as a popular and commercial phenomenon begins with the career of the Weavers, formed in November 1948 by Pete Seeger, Lee Hayes, Fred Hellerman, and Ronnie Gilbert of People's Songs, of which Seeger had been president and Hayes executive secretary. People's Songs, which disbanded in 1948 to 49, had been a clearinghouse for labor movement songs, and in particular the CIO, which at the time was one of the few if not the only union federation that was racially integrated, and in 1948 had thrown all its resources to the failed presidential campaign of progressive party candidate Henry Wallace, a folk music aficionado. His running mate was a country music singer-guitarist, Hayes and Seeger had formerly sung together as the politically activist Almanac Singers, a group which they founded in 1941 and whose personnel often included Woody Guthrie, Josh White, Led Belly, Cisco Houston, and Bess Lomax Hawes. The Weavers had a big hit in 1950 with the single of Led Belly's Good Night Irene. This was number one on the Billboard charts for 13 weeks. On its flip side was Tsina Tsina Tsina, an Israeli dance song that concurrently reached number two on the charts. This was followed by a string of Weaver hit singles that sold millions, including So Long It's Been Good To Know You, Dusty Old Dust, by Woody Guthrie and Kisses Sweeter Than Wine. The Weavers' career ended abruptly when they were dropped from Decca's catalog because Pete Seeger had been listed in the publication Red Channels as a probable subversive. Radio stations refused to play their records and concert venues canceled their engagements. A former employee of People's Songs, Harvey Matuso, himself a former Communist Party member, had informed the FBI that the Weavers were communists, too although Matusso later recanted and admitted he had lied. Pete Seeger and Lee Hayes were called to testify before the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1955. Despite this, a Christmas Weaver reunion concert organized by Harold Leventhal in 1955 was a smash success and the Vanguard LP album of that concert, issued in 1957, was one of the top sellers of that year, followed by other successful albums. Folk music, which often carried the stigma of left-wing associations during the 1950s Red Scare, was driven underground and carried along by a handful of artists releasing records. Barred from mainstream outlets, artists like Seeger were restricted to performing in schools and summer camps, and the folk music scene became a phenomenon associated with vaguely rebellious bohemianism in places like New York, especially Greenwich Village, and San Francisco's North Beach, and in the college and university districts of cities like Chicago, Boston, Denver, and elsewhere. Ron Ironman and Scott Beretta speculate that, it is interesting to consider that had it not been for the explicit political sympathies of the weavers and other folk singers or, another way of looking at it, the hysterical anti-communism of the Cold War, folk music would very likely have entered mainstream American culture in even greater force in the early 1950s. Perhaps making the second wave of the revival nearly a decade later, that is, in the 1960s, redundant. The media blackout of performers with alleged communist sympathies or ties was so effective that Israel Young, a chronicler of the 1960s folk revival who was drawn into the movement through an interest in folk dancing, 
communicated to Ron Ironman that he himself was unaware for many years of the movement's 1930s and early 40s antecedents in left-wing political activism. In the early and mid-1950s, acoustic guitar-accompanied folk songs were mostly heard in coffee houses, private parties, open-air concerts, and sing-alongs, hootenannies, and at college campus concerts. Often associated with political dissent, folk music now blended, to some degree, with the so-called beatnik scene, and dedicated singers of folk songs, as well as folk-influenced original material, traveled through what was called the coffee house circuit. Across the US and Canada, home also to cool jazz and recitations of highly personal beatnik poetry. Two singers of the 1950s who sang folk material but crossed over into the mainstream were Odetta and Harry Belafonte, both of whom sang Lead Belly and Josh White material. Odetta, who had trained as an opera singer, performed traditional blues, spirituals, and songs by Lead Belly. Belafonte had hits with Jamaican calypso material as well as the folk song-like sentimental ballad, Scarlet Ribbons. Composed in 1949, 